All right, guys, I'm expecting more people to pop in um, as we go along, but we want to get started right away because we have a lot we want to get through and we want to leave time for your questions. So um, first, a couple introductions on the top of your screen. Um, you see Scott Thumma. Scott is with Hartford Seminary, so thank you for staying up so late and yeah, uh, doing this for us. Really appreciate it. Um, and then on the other side of me, if your screen looks like mine, <clears throat> is Riff Matre from Spokane Faves. He's on our board and he's going to be helping us with the questions. So he'll be looking at the chat box. Um, if you guys don't know how to look at it, if you hit the chat button at the very bottom of your Zoom screen, um, you'll see a chat box pop up where you can um, comment and ask questions along the way. So, um, and, and if you don't know me, my name's Tracy Simmons. I'm the uh, editor of Spokane Faves. And we decided to do this webinar, live webinar via Zoom, because um, so many churches and houses of worship are trying to figure out how to uh, stream their services or just digitize their worship. And so we wanted to uh, give you some pointers because that's not really something they teach in seminary. Um, <laughs> or maybe they do now, but. No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> So um, the, we have a list of 12 things we want to go over. Hopefully we'll get to all of them. Um, first thing we want to talk about is what you should be presenting uh, digitally. So we saw a lot of churches over the weekend live streaming. Um, and you have to think about whether or not live streaming is the best option for you, or if maybe you should do some kind of pre-recorded um, um, production. But you have to think about um, what it is you want everyone to see who's watching. So. Do you want them just to see the sermon or do you want the music and um, the homily and all this stuff to be part, part of it? Um, do you want the tone to be casual, professional? How long do you want it to be? Um, it's pretty likely that if you have um, an hour long Zoom church service, people at home are gonna get distracted and maybe uh, walk away. And so um, I know I'm having to convert all of my classes right now to um, Zoom videos for my students. Um, and I'm going to do short little, as short as I can videos because people's attention spans are short and I want to be able to produce something that they actually want to watch. Um, and sometimes that might be a live video and sometimes might be something I produce beforehand. So um, with that, I'm going to kick it over to Scott to talk about what mode to use. Sure. Um, you know, once, once you decide uh, whether you're going to do it, uh, uh, the whole service or just a sermon, uh, and that sort of thing, then, then you, you need to think about whether, um, how, where you're going to put it, uh, what, what kind of uh, platform are you going to use to disseminate it out. Uh, if it's, if it's pre-recorded uh, a video, then, you know, you can send it out in multiple ways, but if it's live streamed, there, there really are only a, a few platforms and you know, if you're if you're just starting out uh, last minute because of the crisis, it's it's not really the time to jump into uh, really high tech stuff. And and so sometimes uh, Facebook Live seems like a good option until everybody decides Facebook Live is a is a good option. Um, but there there are lots of other platforms. Uh, there's also Skype and and Go to Meeting and Zoom. Um, there's uh, YouTube uh, streaming, uh, so there there are a whole host of ways to to put it up. But you you really need to think about whether it should be presented live or or uh, recorded. Uh, there's pros and cons to each of them. Obviously, live uh, gives you a much more immediacy, and you feel like you're right there with the person. Uh, but if if it's all one way anyway, if if it's just coming from the leader. Uh, then uh, it could very well be a recorded uh, uh, message that, that feels live. I, I was talking earlier about Stephen Colbert is doing uh, some short uh, presentations while, while he's at his house uh, in quarantine. And, and you get the feeling that, it's, that he's sitting there talking to you as if he was... Uh, you, you also have to think about a lot of those shows and many of the shows uh, record it live in front of an audience. Uh, we don't have an audience if you, you know, if no one's at your church. Uh, so you have to think about, do you want it to exactly replicate uh, what you do in the service each week, or do you want to make the sermon part of it meaningful and then find other ways to, to do that other stuff? 
so does it really have to be live to be effective? Uh, we, can, we can talk about that more. Um, but now we'll, we'll go back to, to Tracy and, about and, platforms. Yeah, Sorry. and the other, the other thing to think about too, if you guys were um, on the line while we were kind of waiting for this to start, you probably noticed we didn't have music going. Um, and there's a reason for that. So uh, we don't want to break any copyright laws. And so if we were to stream Spotify or something like that, um, and then post this on YouTube or Facebook Live, it's going to get taken down, right? So you, there's that awkward silence that we have to figure out how to you know, navigate a little bit. So I think that's a really important thing uh, to keep in mind. We don't want anyone to get in trouble here. So um, what platform should you use? Most churches seem to be using Facebook Live right now. Um, the problem with that, we have to keep in mind that not everybody has Facebook. So maybe not everyone in your church has a Facebook account. Um, so that's something. Also, you probably have noticed that everyone's stuck at home and they're all on Facebook right now. And so it's really wonky. It's working really slow. Um, I know for faves, every time I post an article, it doubles or triples the pictures. So um, it may not be the most dependable platform right now as everybody is on there. Also, if you do a Facebook Live, there is a way to take the embed code from Facebook and put it on your website, but it is a little bit tricky sometimes. So one that might be better um, is what we're doing right now, which is Zoom. Um, so Zoom, the one we're on right now is a paid version, but for um, 40 minutes and up to 100 participants, you guys can use Zoom for free. No one else in your church needs the app. No one else needs a Zoom account. All you have to do, like what we did with this one, is create the meeting and post the link and people can just click on it and boom, they're in the meeting. Um, the other nice thing about Zoom is whether you have a free or paid account, it records, you have the option to record. So we're recording this right now. Um, that way I can put it up um, on our website uh, later. Um, the nice thing is if you record something like this, you can put it on multiple platforms. So I can go ahead and post it on YouTube and then post the link on Facebook from YouTube and embed it on the website. Um, Scott, I don't know much, I haven't used GoToMeeting very much, but I know you mentioned that one as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not as, as good as uh, Zoom. I, I would strongly encourage Zoom. Um, and I don't even own stock. Uh, the, the, other, <laughs> the other nice piece about Zoom is if you, if you do record it, um, when uh, you get the recording back, it, it comes both with a transcript, but also, the video has rolling along on the side, the audio with, or the, the uh, transcript with it. So it, it actually makes it uh, much, uh, much better for accessibility for, for all, all people. They can actually follow along with the sermon. Mm -hmm. uh, I, in fact, I'm, I'm doing another uh, webinar like this uh, tomorrow, and I had two requests from, from folks uh, could I get the transcript uh, because I, I can't hear the, the audio. So that's, that's really nice. The, um, yeah. yeah, you go ahead. No, go ahead. No, that's all right. I was, I was going to move on. Is that? Mm -hmm. is yeah, that cool? equipment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, again, uh, we, can, we can talk more about equipment uh, when we do the Q&A because it gets tricky what, what to cover. But but you really can use uh, a whole host of things uh, from a, a DSLR camera, oftentimes can, can be used, uh, camcorders, uh, laptops like, like we're using right now. Uh, but a lot of folks are just using their phone. Uh, I, I know of any number of um, clergy who, who just used a tripod and, and set up their phone uh, this past week and, and had really fine recordings. Um, a lot of it also will, will depend on, on what current systems you might use in your congregations uh, uh, presently. Uh, if, if you have a good audio and, and video system in, in the congregation that you use, uh, it, it's possible to tap into that. But, but we can talk about some of the challenges of that in an MP. Uh, sanctuary though too. Um, there's also um, streaming setups that you can purchase uh, for not a lot of money. Uh, uh, one of, the, uh, one of the, the most often used is Mevo, uh, M-E-V-O. Uh, it's a camera specifically for streaming. There we go. Uh, 
but but in fact, you know, uh, even something like the this little camera works perfectly fine. Um, <clears throat> absolutely, though, I, I watched any number of services um, this this past week, and and one of the things that was missing are tripods. <laughs> you know, I I saw people holding the cameras. <laughs> uh i saw the individual who was speaking holding the camera and and it was it was just chaotic you you really want some stability there and if you do use a phone you want to make sure to use the camera that's on the back side not not the selfie camera because <laughs> it's the the back side camera is is usually much superior to the to the selfie cam um and oftentimes the sound that gets picked up on the phone is not bad, uh, but we'll we'll talk about that uh, more in a little bit. Um, so, about the picture. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yes, I I can't say it enough to use a horizontal. <laughs> oh, horizontal. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yep. Not not vertical. Um, vertical shots. I think it, you know um, our phones have made us take pictures and do video this way. Snapchat, Instagram. Um, but really, you can get more in the in the photo and the video if you do it this way. Um, but then you have to think about how you're framing yourself. Um, and so think about the rule of thirds, if you remember back when you were in school and you learned about that. So um, right now in this screen, I am perfectly centered. Um, it'd probably be better if I was over here just a little bit. And that way, at least there's something interesting in the background. Um, because you can't really see my camera. That was a prop to show you that I had one. Um, so you have to think about... Um, the shot that you're in and lighting um, as well and the angles. So do I want to be back here where we see a lot of this too, right? And that's not that's not very nice. So um, it might feel really uncomfortable, but if you feel like you're um, cl close to the camera, maybe get a little bit closer. Um, it's the same with taking pictures, right? When you're taking pictures of someone, you want to go ahead and get just a little bit closer in there. So um, think about what's in the background, make sure there's no plants or poles coming out of your head because that will be distracting um, to your audience. So um, anything else on the background, Scott? Um, well, uh, I, I mean, I do think the, the, one, of the, one of the problems that I saw in a lot of the services that I, that I viewed this last week, um, the was the, the subject was not close enough to the camera uh and, or you you got too much of the rest of the sanctuary or wherever they were filming from uh you really want a kind of medium shot for the the person who who is the centerpiece so in this case would be the the the, the person leading the worship um which which isn't the whole way down to their waist but but somewhere sort of uh, midsection and up uh, that that just gives um, them so much more presence uh, a lot of my a lot of my research is with mega churches and mega church pastors for like 30 years and so I've watched an awful lot of uh, services on screens and uh, they have learned that they want they want to be able to see the face of the leader because you can see so much more expression uh, when the person when you have a full face shot but but it can't just be a talking head it, it has to also have uh, some embodiment to it um, the as Tracy said you know uh, keep the background as simple as possible but also interesting uh, you've probably seen videos where it's just purely white behind and and it, sometimes that's done on purpose but it but it doesn't it doesn't convey a lot of warmth or it doesn't convey um actually even um uh, kind of spiritual <laughs> and now if you have buddha behind you <laughs> and and so i i can't i put a buddha behind me as well there but uh that that gives uh, people something to look at uh in part, we're trying to uh, create a worshipful time. Think about how much your eyes wander and look at other things while you're in worship. <laughs> uh, you know, you're you're doing other things. You're you're not focused constantly on the face of the the person delivering, and, and so you have to think about that. Uh, the other the other thing is, um, yeah, uh, 
you you sometimes maybe if you if you're adept or you have some people in your in your congregation using two cameras one one that's focused on the face of the person and one that's a little further back and has more of the the background uh, then if you have to do some edits you can always switch from the one camera angle to the other camera angle and you don't get those those jarring sort of shifts that you do sometimes when you have to make a cut and then and then go from the other um, so try to keep the background as simple but as interesting as possible okay mm -hmm. yeah we there's a lot of um dead dead time at church you know where that's not very visual where someone's um just think about that when you're when you're producing a video or thinking about live stream too is there a lot of dead air is there a lot of silence right now because that's when people um, are going to want to walk away. Remember, we do have to think a little bit about even though people are tuning in for church on the web, um, there's lots of other distractions, more interesting, better things that are available to them on TV, right? So we have to make something that they want to watch. So we have to think about those those dead spots. Um, and we've seen a lot of shots this past week where um, we just see all the empty pews in the church and the pastor up front. So I think that's what Scott was also trying to say is just kind of maybe move the camera above um, those empty pews just to the to the pastor um, and if you're going to do a live streaming we're seeing a lot of of clergy just do live streaming sermons from home um, another thing about the background if you use zoom there's an ability to do virtual background um, but we don't recommend it <laughs> so it really slows down um, the computer and if you don't have a, a really up-to-date computer it doesn't really work very well so um, it's fun to play with but i wouldn't recommend um, giving a sermon from like, well, I think you can do jungle or the space or something like that. So don't do that. <laughs> um, next, we want to talk a little bit. Yeah, see, Scott's doing it now. See how it does not work. <laughs> it does not work. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the other thing to think about is lighting. So especially if you are doing a, a program from home. So right now, um, I'm pretty well lit. I have a lamp on but it's behind my computer. A lot of people tend to, normally the, the lamp is back here, but if I was to turn that lamp on right now, I would be backlit. So um, always try to move a camera in front of your computer. Avoid those harsh overhead neon lights as possible. Um, and then think about maybe any shadows or glares. So this would probably be better if I didn't have my glasses on, right? But Because you can see the glares coming in. Anything else on um, lighting? Scott, yeah, just... I'm I'm too lit, uh, uh, but I'm down in the basement, so I have my basement office. But uh, yeah, I the the backlit one is uh, one that I saw quite a bit of. Mm -hmm. Or in in a, a sanctuary, oftentimes the lighting is coming down from above, and so it's it's plenty bright in there, except your forehead and your face is hidden in shadow uh and so you know you see the top of the person's head you know perfectly fine and and the, and the pulpit or wherever they're standing great but you don't see their face and that's that's where you need to see the expression and, and make a connection with that person mm -hmm. so um the the same in some ways goes for uh sound quality <laughs> um, it is possible to, to use your phone or to use uh, the, the sound card from a laptop or, or uh, even, even a lot of cameras now have, have good sound cards built into them. But um, that may or may not pick up what our ears pick up, all right? And so one of the things that um, you might want to consider if you're, if you're going to do this for a couple of months is an external mic. And those are, I, there you go. Um, this is the Zoom. Not to yeah. be confused with the video conferencing, this is a great one that can sync with your, if you're gonna actually edit your yeah. video. Yeah, and, and that really helps uh, if you have, if you have um, both a recording device and then the, uh, the visual recording, because then you can set up the shot you want, but you can, you can bring the sound close enough to the person speaking that you get some real clarity there. Uh, the, other, the other thing to think about is what other sounds are happening in the room. And, and we often tune those out uh, 
if we're in the room, <laughs> but uh, it's very different when you're listening to it on, on a screen or on a recording. Uh, you might hear these ambient sounds that, that you normally just tune out. Um, the, the same is true uh, if you try to film outside. Um, it's, it's amazing how, how much <laughs> right, that, that kind of sound uh, will be picked up by the recording. The, the other um, thing is you want to encourage the person to speak a little bit louder uh, than they normally do. Uh, because oftentimes the recording device isn't isn't as precise as as our ear, and and therefore you need it to be a little bit louder. Um, and, and then uh, finally, bef if if you're recording it um, to put it up uh, and it's not live streamed, uh, you you absolutely want to test the sound, <laughs> and and listen to what it sounds like before you call it a wrap and, and send it out because I have uh, heard all, all kinds of problems uh, and, and editing the sound on, on a, a, a piece is, is really quite easy. And when you take out all that dead air or you take out the, the ums and, and those kinds of breaks, uh, it's, a, it's a much cleaner uh, process. We have to think about, right, we're all conditioned to listen to uh, television shows and movies uh, who that that spend months you know perfecting the sound and and adding additional uh, sounds um, that's what we're skilled that's what we're trained to hear uh, it's different when you're in a live performance than it is when you're on the screen but when you're watching a screen you're thinking of that as a professionally done uh, television show or movie or something and and if it doesn't measure up to that quality uh, it it is heard by the listener as a little bit jarring or, or not quite what they would expect and so that that can be a real challenge anyway so you want to think about improving uh, improving that presentation yeah and um, also with audio if, especially think about if you are going to record in your church building and it's empty, there's gonna be a lot of echoes. Um, so that's something to think about, which is another reason why to get the microphone as close as possible. Um, I, I, those of us who were on here earlier were talking about how this makes a great lapel mic. Um, but then that means that's only if you are recording um, within the distance of a phone cord, right? And you're using your iPhone or your smartphone. But if you have earbuds with, with a microphone, you go ahead and hide this in, in somewhere on your vestments um, and you have um, uh, a lapel mic, makeshift lapel mic. Um, I know a lot of uh, radio hosts right now who are doing live radio programs from their houses. Um, so, and not everyone's doing video. Some people are just doing podcasts right now or just doing audio um, stuff for their congregations. And if you, you can do that from home pretty easy, um, you can go it, just in the closet if you have uh, I know it sounds weird but if you have carpeted closet and all those clothes around you um, it's gonna it's gonna pad that sound as well um, I also know someone who's doing recordings right now just for audio and she's in her kitchen table at her kitchen table with tile floor so to buffer that sound she's putting a blanket over her she makes herself a little tent and she's able to do stuff that way so um, I see a question there about editing software we're going to get to that a little bit um, I would just say, if you're just doing audio and you're not worrying about video, then um, Audacity is probably the, the one that I recommend. It's free. It's really, really easy to use. Um, that's the one I use all the time. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really easy to use. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so the other thing to think about if you are going to be doing video is how to um, improve your um, you guys all have your, if you're clergy, you kind of have your, your, um, your habits when you're, when you're behind the podium. And now you have to develop new habits when you're behind the screen. Um, so one thing is to not fidget. Um, I, I watched one service this weekend where um, they recorded in the church. And the pastor has a habit of walking back and forth in front of the church when she's preaching. Um, so we have to learn, if you're going to do this, how to stand still. Um, and not move around a lot because then the camera has to follow you and it can make your viewer a little bit dizzy or someone's not going to follow you and you're going to walk out of the frame and then they're just going to have a shot of an empty room. Um, so think about that. Um, 
also think about distractions. If you're doing this at home, um, I took a big risk tonight. I let my dog stay out of the crate. Luckily he went, we played earlier, so he's crashed, but um, that could be really distracting. Um, Cattails across the screen, things like that, maybe kids. Um, so we have to think about, about those things as well. Um, and then one of the biggest distractions, of course, is ourselves, right? So we stutter, we say things that we are, because we're just not used to doing it this way. So we have to kind of, there's nothing wrong with writing a script and then practicing um, a little bit or even reading if you're going to record from your desktop, which is what we're doing right now. Um, but you want to try to look at the camera, avoid looking down too much at your notes um, because people do feel like they're making some kind of connection. That's why if you look at most magazine <coughs> covers, it's a picture of some celebrities, mostly their face, right? Um, because the, the publisher is hoping through that eye contact, um, you are going to make a connection with that magazine and want to buy it. And it's the same thing here. We can kind of make eye contact. You guys can't tell, but I'm looking at four of you right now. I'm making eye contact with you. Um, but that makes the viewer feel, um, feel special, right? And that this is a one-on-one -on -one thing, which is so important right now when everyone's uh, isolated. So keep that in mind too, the eye contact. Yeah, that, that's really important. Um, in, in, if you're in the pulpit and you're preaching, right, you're preaching to a whole audience and you see them and they see you. And so you have to address folks over there and you have to make eye contact over here. But now you're preaching to, to that one camera right up there. And, and you think about all of the people that are behind that, uh, but you really want to convey this intimacy that I'm, I'm talking directly to you. <laughs> And, and the more that you can, can look at, at that camera, as, as odd as it is in, in many ways, um, it, it really just makes that connection so much greater. Um, so yeah, do, do think about that. Now, if you're, if you're live streaming, um, there's not a lot of editing you can do. Uh, uh, you, you can do some sound mixing and stuff on the, on the fly and that kind of thing if you have a, a nice setup, but but for the most part, um, it's what it is, <laughs> and it's it's out there. Uh, so if you're, but if you're recording a, a video for later, then you can do all of the editing. Uh, you can get rid of that dead dead air or the mistakes or some of the unnecessary things that that might crop in there. Uh, about software, uh, I I use Camtastic. Um, uh, if if you're using an iPhone, iMovie is is uh, uh, quite easy. Um, those those are the only two that I've had experiences with. Um, uh, Wave dot video is another one that I know of, but uh, those are the those are the first those first ones are the two that I've used um, a good bit. I've um, so if you have um, an i if you have an, a Mac, you, iMovie comes with it. But if you have a PC. It gets a little more challenging when it comes to editing video because I don't have movie, uh, Windows Movie Maker anymore. Um, yeah. But you, there's something called Wii Video, W-E-V-I-D-E-O, Wii Video. And that's another one that a lot of people use for PC. It's cloud-based. Um, it's pretty simple kind of drag and drop. Um, there are going to be some limitations. If it's free, it's going to have the Wii Video logo on the bottom left, things like that. But you could pay for a premium account if you think this is something that's going to be happening uh, long term. Um, and then, sorry, Scott, the other That's thing I would no. say, if you do have the Mevo camera, um, which Faves does, and we are happy to come help you, by the way, but um, this has the ability not only to live stream to multiple, um, so you can do Facebook, YouTube, um, Vimeo all at the same time, and you can just set this up, and then you can have someone else with their, the app on the phone, and they can pan in, they can do close-ups on people, so they can actually do live editing for live streaming if you have this camera, but it's not cheap. Um, so, but there are options out there. Yeah. One, one of the other, um, right, if you, if you make a decision just to record the sermon uh, or a, a few words and then, and then you know, uh, some introduction and some um, announcements and that sort of thing, and, th and then the sermon, um, then, then you have to think about, are there other ways that we can recreate what people come to worship for uh, in, in other ways, right? If, if, I come, if I go to a Sunday service, I, I'm getting things 
besides um, the sermon, um, getting music, I'm, I'm getting to meet, be with my friends, uh, I'm getting some maybe bad coffee, <laughs> you know, uh, th there are a whole host of, of other kinds. I'm getting some perhaps religious education. All, all of those other components that make someone come on Sunday morning uh, can also be thought of as uh, being delivered digitally, right? And, and so one of the things that maybe we can talk about in the q and is is how can we go about um, recreating some of those things, uh, either uh, the, the fellowship time or, you know, uh, an opportunity for people to gossip back in the corner or, or to have, you know, coffee together and, and just kind of relax and that sort of thing. There, there are a whole host of ways that you can do that, but um, that's, that's something that you want to think about if you're trying to, to move the experience to digital the, the whole experience doesn't have to be live streamed. It can be delivered in a couple of different ways, uh, not just that moment, but throughout the week. And so that's something to think about. Um, uh, like, likewise, there's also other dimensions of the church <laughs> that you can think about how to, how to deliver digitally. And I'll let Tracy talk about some of those. Yeah, I've done um, a lot of reporting the past week, um, trying to talk with faith communities to see how they are connecting with um, the homebound, um, especially those who maybe aren't very tech savvy right now. And so, of course, um, they're live streaming or they're producing uh, sermons and worship experiences, but they're also uh, reigniting the, the phone tree. Um, they're doing um, email chains, um, FaceTime. So one church I talked to was putting people uh, in groups so if um, they were able to find, if, you, if you'd rather communicate via email, you're in this group. If you want to communicate via face, Facebook, you're this group, FaceTime. And then they are doing weekly um, meetings that way, like home church type things, um, which is really interesting because you get people of all ages and all different groups, and it's a great way to connect. Um, some other things that, that people are doing is care packages where they're, they're, if they feel comfortable leaving the house, then they are delivering those care pa packages with a card, a handwritten note um, to certain members of their congregation. Um, packets that the pastor maybe can create and then send out digitally to families so they can work um, at home on those things. Those are just some of the ideas. Um, I know recently I just talked to a synagogue up in Seattle that celebrated Purim. Um, via zoom which the whole idea there is you get to dress up um and so they just they did it on zoom so they could see everyone's costumes um but everyone was just on their couch instead so um i think you have to figure out what people are wanting be be willing to to accept that there's going to be some mistakes along the way you're going to try something and maybe people aren't going to like it and then you have to to kind of mix that and try something else so um well, I'd be, I'd be curious here in a few minutes if anyone else has has ideas on how you are trying to stay engaged with people. But I think it's kind of old school email and phone calls right now, a lot of that. Well, and, the, you know, the same uh, too is if if you are on Facebook, then then posting a daily devotion on Facebook or or finding using Facebook to communicate in ways that maybe the church bulletin would have, you know, uh, it's uh, trying to replicate um, some of the, the benefits of coming together as a, as a group of faithful people in other ways. Uh, one of those is also giving, right? And we, we didn't talk about that, but if you don't, if you're not doing online giving, uh, now would be a good time to, mm -hmm. to consider it. Um, and I, I'm a, Tracy didn't say, but I'm a, a uh, social scientist and I, I research uh, congregations and denominations. Uh, we did a survey uh, back in 2015 and and I, I calculated one of the questions we asked was do they do online giving and if a church did online giving um, that just just had it available. Um, the per capita giving went up by about $115 a person. And if they actually had online giving and emphasized that this is something that we should be using and doing, uh, it went up almost $300 a person, the, the giving. So 
you know, it's it's an important thing and, and to try to move people over to that. And certainly now when folks aren't there physically to put their checks or to put their cash or whatever into the plate, um, it's it's definitely something you should think about. And and we we offer some suggestions of places, but there are there are many others as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, so other other things. Or? Um, the only, the only other thing that I would, um, I would say, I just had, I just remembered another church that I interviewed up in um, Seattle, where music is a very important part oh, of of their service, and so, um, but they have their own band, their own musicians, and so what they're doing is the the musicians, um, are coming together and they're recording their own music and putting that online, um, and that way people can feel. Uh, they're not breaking any copyright laws, right? And people can really feel connected. And that's not part of, it's not part of the service. So that's a separate upload um, people could listen to at their own leisure. Um, so I think I love that idea. I thought that was really, yeah. really neat. Um, yeah, some churches are trying phone-ins too. So they're getting a, a number so people can just call and listen to a sermon rather than having to to do video if they don't have that capability. Well, and and that's that's one of the nice things about about Zoom, right? you could connect just using your phone with the audio. Yeah, obviously you wouldn't see, uh, but you would be able to hear the conversation and, and the material. And uh, uh, I, Scott just brought up a good point too, that Zoom also, people can call in if they don't have yes, video. That's right. So that's yeah, a great Yeah, that's what I thing. was just saying too. <laughs> yeah. um, the, I, I do wanna say that if, if you're, because um, many congregations have already licenses to use, um, the music in in the church service or or whatever, um, but if you're recording it or, and or streaming it live, you actually have to have another license. You have to have a streaming license as well. Uh, and uh, I heard any number of congregations that were in the midst of live streaming, and YouTube or Facebook took them offline <laughs> because they determined that they didn't have licenses for streaming only. Um, and so that that's something to to really consider. Uh, if you can do uh, homegrown <laughs> music, and uh, then that's great. But or or just have your your pianist or your organist just just riff some, <laughs> you know, if if you really want some music. Uh, but you you do have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So now we have time for some Q and A, and I see some coming in if you do not live stream but simply record does your worship license cover it so it's a matter of where it's being broadcasted so if you're going to it's because if you have the video and you show it in your church which isn't really possible right now that's one thing but once you put it on youtube or facebook live now it now it becomes the broadcasting issue so that's that's the issue there if, if you kept it private within within the confines of the congregation Mm -hmm. um, so possibly, um, cause one of the things that you can do with, uh, Facebook is, is cre create a, a private Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And so then perhaps you could post, um, the video, um, and not get caught, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you have to think about how you're going to, so if you just have a, a large file video, it's probably won't be able to upload a big file to YouTube or via email if people are having trouble um, downloading it. So I'll let the dog out now. He's he wants to play. Um, so um, you have to think about that. About that. We upload on Vimeo and you need the link to access it. So you could make a private link. You could make a link private, I suppose. That could be a way, a way around it which means people who only click on it and, and you give access to can see it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, are there other questions? We had it, we did have a question come in via LinkedIn actually the other day already. Um, someone asked uh, about just more of the stuff people can do at home besides the worship service. Um, we are seeing a lot of kids stuff that's starting to go online where pastors doing like a story time um, via Zoom or via whatever platform. Um, so I think that's seeing yeah. more of that stuff, yeah. One, one of the uh, services I, I watched uh, this past weekend uh, was the pastor sitting, sitting in his living room 
kind of in a rocking chair, which was really bad because he also was rocking. <laughs> so he was going back and forth the whole time. Um, but he, he also uh, pulled up a puppet because one of the things he does in the service is have uh, the, the kids sermon with a puppet, uh, which was, that was wonderful, except it was tied into this longer presentation for the adults. So what the kids are supposed to come and, and watch the puppet and then go play somewhere else. It, it probably would have been so much more effective if he had just recorded that that children's piece <laughs> with the puppet and and then sent that to the parents so that they could watch it or you know rather than tying that together with the adult service uh it just it it didn't work it didn't work for the adult service and it really probably didn't work for the kids either mm -hmm. um, yeah i think i think it's a good idea to kind of break so if, if during a service you have um music and then um a Sunday, uh, like a Sunday sermon for the kids and then, a, and then a sermon for the adults, break those into three separate videos. You know, I, I, that's what I would recommend. Also keep in mind that not everyone has high speed internet. You know, I live, uh, I teach at the university of Idaho and I know a lot of my students don't. And so uh, those shorter, shorter videos are going to be easier for them to download and to watch and just, or to stream if that's what they're doing. Um, someone's asking about zoom. Um, yep. Yeah, so um, we're on right now a professional account and I, I don't, the university paid for it, so I don't know what it cost, but um, I'll tell you that uh, I can get 300 people in one conference um, on the paid version and um, I don't think there's a time limit, so. That's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the 40 minute time limit uh, to the free version uh, is only 40 minutes for a discrete Zoom session. So you could, I mean, if you really wanted to have an hour and a half uh, service, um, you could, you know, do 40 minutes and then say, all right, we're going to take a break, go get some more coffee or something, and then, and then start a new uh, Zoom session and everybody tune into the next one if you want to get around the 40. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure how you can get around the 100 people <laughs> limit, uh, but. Yeah. Um, what other questions do you guys have? If you, you can just type them in the, the chat box there. Yeah, or even a uh, chance to unmute. <laughs> Let's see, that may have, I may have done that. I don't know if I can fix it. Yeah, it's over under, under, uh, oh, I don't have it because I'm not in charge. Oh, I see. <laughs> Um, oh, so what do the hosts, like what do hosts do in Zoom? So right now, um, I'm a host, Scott's a host, and Riff is a host, which means they can, they can control the screen. So that's why at the beginning, Scott was able to share his screen. Um, he has the ability to do that, Riff does as well, um, and to manage the group chat. Um, so you guys couldn't share your screens with me right now because oh, you're not a host. Yeah, let me, let me say a, a bit about that because if you were using a, a platform like Zoom to, to do uh, a service, huh, I, I had one cat visit, now I have a second cat visiting. <laughs> um, you, you could actually tie in little video clips or, or all kinds of other things just by, by sharing the screen. So, you know, um, if, if you wanted to do, uh, I, if you, if you wanted to do a little video clip, right. Uh, I just, I just grab the screen and then this, this is uh, Colbert. Uh, he's, he's doing uh, his talk show from his house, uh, from his bathtub, but, but notice uh, the lighting, the sound, <laughs> the framing of the picture, right? I mean, a lot of the things that we've talked about, uh, he's, he's actually actually doing here. Clips, or you could bring up some music or whatever, uh, and then you can just stop the share and, and go back to um, the, the presentation. Uh, so it's, it's really actually a handy feature, or you could even pull up a, a, a um, a PowerPoint if you were going to read a scripture. So you could bring up the PowerPoint with the scripture and everyone could see it uh, 
and and read it read it together or or just meditate on it right so there's a lot of ways that you can you can do that sharing of different screens to to get that to happen mm -hmm. Yeah, I think PowerPoints are a good idea. You can you can narrate them and, and record those and show those up on your on your screen. But I'm a professor. I guess we like PowerPoint. That's right. We do. <laughs> you guys have any other questions? I'm curious if anyone wants to. I you guys have the ability to unmute yourselves, uh, I believe. But if anyone has ideas on other ways that people are connecting, um, other than through worship, what else is what is your church doing, or what have you tried? I think we're hoping to do um, some book clubs and some small group, even Bible studies or prayer groups that we can, it's a learning curve for, because we have an, an older community, but I think they're all willing to, to learn to be together that way. And I think it'll be very powerful for them during this time. I think that's a great idea. If they're old enough, they probably remember party lines too. So you could just get them all on a yeah, phone call. <laughs> I mean, that that was that was how I first experienced, uh, you know, this this kind of thing. Several of um, United Methodist clergy have been doing a um, office hours in a coffee shop for quite a while now and so several of us are experimenting with zoom office hours yeah where we publish we're going to be on zoom this time and here's how you log in i think that's great i'm doing the same thing with my students i'm actually requiring them to do zoom meetings i guess you can't require your congregation to do that but uh yeah and one the cool thing about zoom if if you say my office hours are going to be from two to three or whatever you can create a waiting room so that way you can talk to one person at a time and then once that person exits the next person can come in so that's a nice feature i like that coffee shop time mm -hmm. yeah. um, any other questions about the tools about about video or audio or um, any of that fun stuff or what, what did people do um, this past week? Um, any experiments that uh, went well or, or uh, were total failures? And learning, no, they were learning, yes. Yeah, what were some of your failures <laughs> and triumphs right. this week? <laughs> Oh, one, one of the other things um, that I, I saw several people were kind of recommending that because in, in New England, we have a lot of really small churches that just don't have the technology and, you know, most of the congregation are over 70. Um, and, and so what the, the clergy were doing were saying, all right, you, you don't often get to worship somewhere else. And I know that this congregation is, is going to do a really fine production. So why don't we all like attend there? <laughs> and, and then we can have a conversation about how, how it was similar or different or how uplifting it was. And so it, it's, it's not that every congregation needs to, to worship in, in the same way, right? They can, they can find some other ways to, to get that spiritual experience and yet keep the sense of community and that we're doing this together and that sort of thing. So that, that's certainly another, another way to approach some of this um, rather than trying to produce a video each week or, or you, know, you, can, you can experiment with some other, other ways of doing it. Is there is there any um, concern that if all of our churches start broadcasting in whatever fashion our Sunday morning service between you know nine and noon on Sundays that we're going to crash a system or something like that? So because frankly, this last week I did not push myself to get competent at a live stream. I just uploaded my written sermon because um, I thought. 
I don't want to go to all that work and then have the system crash and nothing happens. But I, but I am getting up to speed to do that this coming week. Probably not at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. I'll tell my people, you know, it will be available this time. Mm -hmm. But is that a real concern? Like if we all start doing it on Sunday morning, will that be a problem? Will we overwhelm Facebook if we're all doing live stream? I, yeah. I, I think um, there, there were some problems uh, okay. with Facebook this, this last week. Uh, I, I talked to a couple clergy uh, who had uh, lag time or, you know, that kind of deadly spiral, you know, waiting for things to, to load. Um, so I, 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 think, I think there's some of that actually happening. Um, so, yeah, it, I mean, that's one of the nice things about doing a video because, because then you, you have it captured, you know, if, if the live thing isn't going on very well, um, you, you always have the, the video anyway. And if you're using, like right now, we're recording uh, this, and it records directly to Zoom's cloud. You have the option to record it onto your computer or to the cloud. Um, and so, and I looked into it, and that, that doesn't matter if you have a free account or a paid account. So that's kind of nice. We had a question about shares. Does a free plan include shares? But I'm not sure what, what they mean by shares. Somebody also asked about the hosts. Uh, how you know? There's a minimum of ten uh, hosts. Um, that's that's just the people who can control. Uh, huh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> this is a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, screen sharing. Yeah. Y um, you can yes, you can share your screen um, on Zoom, whether it's free or not whoever the host is. <laughs> and, and so Scott, yes, I, I would say record, record uh, the youth uh, meeting uh, from your bathtub. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it, was, it was really effective. It was really quite, quite, quite good. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it, it, it is interesting right now because I, I, I watch a lot of the late night comedians and when they have a live audience, right, they, they have a, a, a real dynamic presentation. That first night when all of them came out and they didn't have an audience at all, it was, it was just flat, <laughs> you know, and, and you don't want that for your own sermons, right? You, you don't want uh, that kind of dynamic. And so, after that first night, all of those late night comedians have gone to a different format, one that's more intimate, one that they are they're not doing an hour long thing. They're just doing a short, nice piece, which is another thing we need to say, right? Don't make it 30 or 40 minutes long. Um, you know, make it, make it meaningful and personal and 10 or 15 minutes at the most. You know, you want to do something that people say oh that was that was great that was uplifting that was spiritual not uh, that was deadly <laughs> right you, you don't want that reaction um and i it, it's really quite interesting uh looking at at how the late night comedians shifted their presentation um to to try to capture a little bit of their charisma in a different a different format uh, yeah. quite quite interesting um, Scott, mostly Scott, Scott and I, but mostly Scott produced, um, um, a article that goes along with this, or we have some links for you guys, including a link on how to make a, a homemade tripod in case you don't have one and you don't want to run out to the store right now. Um, and we have links to some other stuff as well, including some online giving resources. Um, so I will, that's on the Spokane Faves homepage right now. And I can, um, I'm going to embed this video into that article as well. So, and then just wanted to say also that, you know, um, we're all trying to navigate this together. And so Spokane Faves wants to, um, to help however we can. Um, I'm happy to um, help with some, some video and some live streaming if you need my help. So just reach out. Um, I'm happy to use this camera. I'm not gonna use it a whole lot here in my living room. 
but I'm happy to uh, to go to your church and and help you with stuff if if I need to. So I think most of you guys know how to get a hold of me, but if not, I'll put it I'll put it here in the chat. Yeah, some somewhere in the chat, I also have uh, my email address. Um, and if if you're so if you're interested in uh, how many congregations use different technologies? I have a couple reports on on that. They're they're uh, from 2010 and 2015, uh, and and we're actually doing a national survey. Maybe some of you have taken it um, of what we hoped were going to be like 12,000, 15,000 congregations. We have 6,000 of them in right now because we're right in the midst of it. So, so we have six or 7,000 surveys already in, and then chaos. <laughs> uh, and so it, it'll be really interesting to see once, once we get uh, the five or 6,000 surveys some other time after all this happens, um, whether the use of technology, because we ask a bunch of those questions, whether the use of technology changes significantly between uh, the first wave <laughs> of this survey and the, and the second wave of the survey. It'll, it'll be quite fascinating to see. Yeah. I have heard people say, though, they wish churches would do this all the time, have the, the streaming option because Amen. if they're sick, <laughs> um, now they can watch it, you know, from, from home. Um, and I've heard other pastors say they've had more people watch yes. like online than they have actually come into church. And so this is a way f to expand your message too, to, you know, someone way over in Connecticut like Scott. Yeah. That's right. Well, and I, I have heard that too from any number of people. Um, and, you know, I, I, I teach this stuff all the time at Hartford Seminary uh, to, to clergy in the doctorate of ministry, and I'm, I'm always pushing these kinds of things. But we, we all know that only maybe a third of our members ever, you know, show up on any given week. And even the active people don't come every week. And so if you can make um, what you do in worship and what you do as, as a church uh, more on demand, then you might get more participation. You might get more involvement from those folks who only show up once a month. Uh, they, they may actually have a good reason for only showing up once a month and, and having the stuff recorded and, and able to do it on their time and, and not just Sunday morning from nine to 11 uh, might actually help the level of commitment. And, such. Mm -hmm. and then the last thing I would just say is to really, and then we'll go to Deb, is to really just listen to for feedback. Um, if people, what are people liking? What are they tuning into? And where are they? Are they on Facebook or are they on some, or some other platform? And try to meet them where they are, right? Which is, yep. um, what's your question, Deb? Actually, it's more of a comment because someone was talking about one way to go ahead and use music is to make it private and share it just with their congregation. But all of the clergy in my system that are talking are saying the number of people watching their videos is like stunning. It's like, it's not just their congregation. So that chance for evangelism you lose if you choose to use copyright music and keep it private rather than broadcasting it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a lost opportunity in my book. Yeah. And that's a limitation with potentially with Facebook too, right? Excluding people who aren't there. But yeah, I think you guys are just gonna have to start singing at the beginning of your videos. So yeah, or I mean, you have to wonder: um, do are people coming to tune in to hear the music when when there's YouTube and there's you know recorded music, or are they coming to get that kind of personal connection and and spiritual? uplift from your words and and what and you know what you radiate uh from the screen and so uh i, I that's that's why we started with that that first question of what to present you know uh, what do you want to leave people with uh a, a relaxed feeling uh you know a casual or a professional uh, with your collar and all and um the, the different mediums really uh, convey a different sense of, of who you are and what we're about as a, as a community. And so you really need to spend some time thinking about that. You know, do you want to bore them with every piece of the service that you would, would normally do in, a, in a, you know, an hour long uh, worship service? Or do you want to really get down to that uh, touching them 
and addressing their their concerns and their anxieties and their and their uh, uncertainty during this time and and give them um, you know some some spiritual nurturance uh, around some of that so that's it's an important thing to think about mm-hmm. um, we want to keep the conversation going however we can. We've floated the idea of doing like a weekly webinar or weekly Zoom or something with people just to kind of brainstorm some of these things. So if that's of interest to you, uh, please please let us know if there's a topic you want us to, to research and, and come back to you with um, online giving or offline services other than worship or whatever it might be. Um, we want to try to keep those events going as digital, digital now is what we have to do. But. And, and I, I I can say this, Tracy maybe can't, but but if you don't give to to faves, you 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 should consider uh, you know some gift to faves. Uh, it's it's a wonderful thing. Uh, I I have been so uh, overjoyed with what Tracy is doing there, and and so unhappy because she used to do that here in Connecticut, uh, and then she took her her business elsewhere and. Uh, but uh, it's it's a wonderful uh, a wonderful thing. I uh, I think there should be a faves in every every town in the country. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, guys. If there's no more questions or comments, you know how to find us. Um, we're happy to thank you. Thank you for for tuning in and uh, look forward to connecting in the future very soon. <laughs>